Hey everybody, welcome back. Devin, the OG, the original Grognard here for Lock and Load Publishing and we're taking a look at something a little bit new and something we've decided to branch out into here at Lock and Load Publishing. Yes, this is Tabletop Simulator. What does that mean? We have released three starter kits on Tabletop Simulator, one module for Lock and Load Tactical, one module for Nations at War, and one module for World at War 85, Storming the Gap. Now these are all the starter kits, and we thought it would be best if we sat down and actually showed you what is going on. Some of you may not know what Tabletop Simulator is, <clears throat> some of you may know what it is and just don't care about it. So we figured we would go ahead and put out a video highlighting these through three scenario packs. And the plan is, and, and be, be very careful about when you're listening to me on this one, we are planning on releasing through Tabletop Simulator for free each of the boxed games for Lock and Load Tactical that we have done and Nations of War and World of War. Now, <clears throat> before you get too excited... They are going to be one scenario from each one of the games. So everybody will have a chance to sit down for free to take a look at it and, and decide if that's a module that they want to pick up and they want to buy. We will probably also be offering the full modules, but those will be paid DLCs um, for Tabletop Simulator. But we're at least going to let everybody get a chance to try, eat, try one scenario from each box set for free. So... What is Tabletop Simulator? Tabletop Simulator is a board game emulator that has been rather popular the last few years. Uh, I will admit, initially, I was very hesitant about Tabletop Simulator. It's like, ah, what do I need Tabletop Simulator for? I got Vassal. Tabletop Simulator does things oh so much better than Vassal and oh so much easier than Vassal. So what happens is you go onto Steam. Normally, it's about $20, $19.99. Uh, for Tabletop Simulator, and when you get it and you download it, you have access to all the mods that people have made in the workshop. There's also a, a bunch of premium uh, DLCs that do cost some money, and if you want to buy those, that's fine. Now, the key is you don't have to buy the modules for uh, you don't have to buy the DLCs for all your friends. As long as one person has the module, <clears throat> anybody can play with them. <clears throat> just kind of like a real board game. One person buys the board game, as many people can play with them as possible. And I should probably turn global off because global tends to be very, very annoying chat. Eh, whatever. We'll get we'll get off the screen in a little bit. Um, so you, you purchase the tabletop simulator. And good thing is, every time there's a sale, tabletop simulator goes on sale for like nine bucks. I picked my copy up for ten bucks. Like I said, during the spring sale here in March, I think it was in March. Um, <clears throat> and so you you get it off Steam, you install it, and the links for each of the individual modules in the workshop I'll, I will post down below. So if you already have Steam or if you're looking to get into this and, and not sure how to find the modules on Tabletop Simulator, the links are just going to be right down below in the in the description. Just click on them. It'll take you right to them. You just hit subscribe and it automatically puts it into your library. So what happens when you get to Tabletop Simulator? How do you use it? How do you play it? Well, the first thing you want to do is you're going to want to, if you want to play solo or if you're going to play against a friend, go ahead and hit create. And either single player or multiplayer, or you can even do hot seat. Multiplayer, obviously, if you want to play with other people. Hot seat, if you're playing with other people that are right here. And single player. So let's go ahead and hit single player. And when you hit single player, brings up this list of modules. Now there's the classic games, which are completely for free. And, you know, anybody can use them if they have Tabletop Simulator. Uh, there is DLCs, and these are all the paid DLCs. Um, I don't like paying for DLCs, so I see we even got Dan Versen's Warfighter is here on, on Tabletop Simulator. Um, there's that, and then Workshop. This is the one that's important. Whenever you subscribe to a game on the Workshop for Tabletop Simulator, this is where it's going to put it. As you can kind of see, I've got a few games on here. Um, so you just decide on which one you want to start off with. But what we're going to do is we're going to start off by taking a look at the Nations of War starter kit. So you open the workshop, the workshop right here, the big blue button, click on the module. Are you sure you want to load Nations of War starter kit? Hit load and it'll start to load all the assets. It takes a little bit. Beep, beep, beep. 
beep, beep, beep. And since I've already preloaded, it doesn't take that long. So as you can see, it kind of zoomed in right away. So you will notice that it's a little bit different than Vassal because we've got this sweeping panoramic photo. And most, most DLCs, most tabletop games you're going to see, you're going to have that on it. I, it just gives it a little bit of background. We got this really nice table here and we've got a kind of a dice roller over here with some dice. And oh, what's this? We've got some 3D models. That's the other cool thing about tabletop simulators. If you want to, you can add in 3D models that have been done elsewhere. So this is kind of cool. We got a T-34 here. We got some Soviet infantry. What do we got over here on the other side? We got a KV-1 and some Soviet infantry. So anyways, that's all decoration. <clears throat> now, what you're going to find when you open up the Nations at War, since this is the starter kit, the Nations at War only has one scenario in it, so you don't have to worry too much about tracking it down. So here's the map for it. The map's all done, and as you look, you can zoom in. It looks so pretty and beautiful. Look at that. Um, you've got your terrain effects charts and counter TECs over here. Now, one thing most people don't realize when they start off in, in Tabletop Simulator is if you cursor, you see the little cursor, whee, put the cursor over any book or anything and you push the Alt key, it gives you a blown up view of the of whatever you're hovering over. So here we have Stalin's Triumphs TLC, TEC. So that saves you from having to try to scroll in and, you know, shift the perception perspective. You just push Alt, and there you go. And it happens on pretty much anything. I don't think, yeah, it works on the map board, works on the dice. Here we got the scenario card right here. Here we got the turn record track. And so everything you're going to need to play this, hey, we've even got the rules right here. You see this little arrow button? That's how you change the pages. So if you want to take a look at the rules in game, now it is a little bit annoying because you do have to kind of flip to each page and then hit the alt. So it's not really good for searching something. So I would recommend having a, a secondary copy around you so you can quickly reference because the rule book with the flipping of the pages and everything, that's always kind of a little bit annoying. Um, we've got a little counter here for keeping track of victory points or something. I don't know, you know, the crack, the counter's in there for a reason. Um, you got the formation draw bag. So as, as, you, as everybody knows, Nations at War is a formation draw game. And here's the formation deck right here. See, we highlight on that what you do. If you wanna look at what's in there, you just right click on it, hit search, and this will bring up all the formation cards. Second guards tanks, 11th Panzer, 276 tank, and 505th Heavy Panzer. Well, now if you take a look at the scenario, each formation is gonna need one formation card. So we know the 276th, the second guards tank, the 505th and the 11th Panzer all need one formation card. So just go ahead and draw one formation card and drop it into the formation bag. And that's how you maintain some randomness about it. Plus how many intern markers are there? There are for this two intern markers. Now you put it in here and you can shuffle as many times as you want. And then when it comes to the, the, the draw phase, you just click and draw a card out and then flip it over. And there we go. There's the, there's, there's your, there's your formation that's being activated. We've got these ammo crates here. We've got admin markers. If you want to know what's in each one of these crates, just go ahead and hit search. And it brings up, all right, those are the admin markers that are in the crate. The turn, in turn, ops complete, out of command, dispersed. Now, you'll also notice we have these bags here of these chits, and you can draw the chits out. And since it's got the little infinity symbol over it, you can, you can draw as many of them out as you want. So it'll just keep going until you get tired of drawing markers. Uh, scenarios, let's see, let's look in here. There's no scenarios in here, but... It is being modularized, so when we do release the full 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 box game, the scenarios will be right in there. Then all the units are in here. Here's all the different units. Now they, we all have also included the actual chits. So if you don't want to use the formation cards, some people don't like the cards. Some people prefer the chits. You've got the command chits. You just draw the chits, drop the chits, 
right into the formation bag shuffle them sometimes you got to make sure yeah see i didn't exactly drop it you got to make sure you drop it in the into the bag or the bucket or whatever the game uses so you've got the option of using the formation cards or formation shits and then here's all the units the headquarters for the 11th panzer headquarters for 505th uh pz3l pz4 tiger and so basically all you do is you just pull them out now let's go ahead and close that say we just want to pull them out we just pull them all out like this but now that's all of them. Now the thing is, that doesn't look like that's all the counters for the German side. Let's take a look at it. 505th Heavy Panzer has a HQ, three Tigers, and one formation marker. Well, let's take a look. Well, there's the 505th, and there's one Tiger. We're missing two Tigers. Well, that's okay. Just go ahead and hit clone. There you go. You can clone as many counters as you want, as much as you like. And then you just go ahead and follow with the scenario and just put the counters on the board and play the game like you would if you were playing against an opponent. You can stack them. Now, we don't have uh, snap two positions in this, so you're probably going to sometimes get, you know, like, oops, I accidentally dropped it in the wrong space. What you can do is if you kind of see there's that shadow underneath the counter, wherever that shadow is, that's where the counter will drop. That's one of the easiest ways since we don't have snapping on. And now the only thing that this doesn't do over uh, Vassal is you can't cursor over a stack to see everything that's in the stack. You do actually kind of have to pick everything up. And I'll admit that gets a little bit cumbersome when there's a whole stack of things. But, you know, I think the, tr the, the trade off is is perfectly fine. So that's yeah. There's the German markers. There's the Soviets. And so this is just a quick Oh, one of the things I love about uh, tabletop simulator. If you get really mad at your opponent. You can just flip the table. <laughs> now, the good thing is, if you flip the table, you can hit the back button, rewind time, and reset it to where it was before you flip the table. That's come up in a few of the games I've played with, with buddies. Um, so this is Nations at War. And honestly, here we are. Here we go. We got a German dice. We got a Soviet dice. Again, it's two dice isn't enough. Just go ahead. Hit clone. Whoops, that was the button to... To roll the dice. Oh, stop that. Clone. So, bunches of dice. And you just select them all if you want to roll them all. Boom! There you go. I think that dice rolling is a little bit better than the Vassal dice roll. And it even tells you what it is there. So, um, but yeah, that's Nations at War. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at World at War 85. Go back to the main menu. And there is a way to save games. A lot of people have asked, how do you save games? Well, when you want to uh, to start up, say you go into single player, go into the save and load, it pretty much will save whenever you log out of whatever game you're playing. Or you can hard save it, like right here, I have a Terraforming Mars five player start because the Terraforming Mars has got a lot of junk in it and we got rid of a lot of stuff of it and shuffled all the cards. And so that's our default start when we play Terraforming Mars. But so for every, for you, it, it will automatically save whatever the last game was whenever you logged out. Or like I said, you can hard save it in the middle of a game. You can even hard save it when you're playing against other people. So let's go ahead and jump in. Let's take a look at World of War 85. Let's load the World of War 85 starter kit. And this one is looks very similar to the Nations at War. That's because the same individual, Richthofen 56. If you can't find the modules, take a look. Look for uh, Richthofen 56 under the workshop. That's the name of the designer. And he's got... Uh, several dozen games on there that he's ported over into Tabletop Simulator. Uh, there's Starship Troopers. He's got Panzer Leader, Panzer Blitz, Arab Israeli Wars. He's got a bunch of games. Go check it out if you're into X Encounter stuff. So again, we're looking at somewhat the similar setup of Nations at War. We got the rulebook over here. The core rules that you can flip through. But again, it's a little bit because you can't flip to certain pages. You've got this, the, the formations deck right here, and we can take a look at it. See, here's, here's the end of ops, end of ops, 247th, designated formation, Bravo 111, Bravo 111. So if you want to draw the cards, you've got that deck there. Now, this one doesn't have the, the, the bags in it, but all you have to do is click the, on the deck of cards and then shuffle. 
As you can see, they're shuffling all over the place. You do as many times as you want, and then just draw a card, hit F to flip the card over, bam, there's your activation. Again, you don't have that many dice. Now I know, I know for a fact, that you're gonna need more dice in this. So you just go ahead, do that, hit clone. Whoops, that's the wrong button again. And clone and do it outside. And you can clone as many dice as you want, just like in Nations at War. And here is the World at War map. Beautifully well, high res. I mean, you can just take a look at it from any angle. You can go complete top down. You can go at a, at a tabletop angle. Uh, here we've got the turn record track and offboard artillery. Now, again, this is these have been specifically designed for the starter kit, which is just one scenario. Uh, here we got the, the, the scenario uh, outline. And you can just turn the page. And there your, is your setup tells you your entire setup and just like nations at war you've got these little crates that have your soviet pack counters in it let's go ahead and take a look in there search so there's all the different types of counters now again when you pull it out it's right there and that is very nice you can actually read them if you need to clone it you just clone what you need but that will be where your infantry or your units are for the soviets and here it is for nato and then admin counters let's take a look at all the different admin counters oh my god there's so many admin counters oh my god now most of these you're not going to be using the starter kit because there's no landed nape of the earth but again this is going to be used as the base for when we do the entire module release so it's good to get that type of stuff programmed in initially than trying to go and get it later. Uh, we got a little clock here that gives local time, 11.53 and 43 seconds. So that's my local time. And we got cool M1 Abrams here. And that looks like a yep, BTR-60. And we got a T8. No, oh, it's a T72 or T62. Ooh. Oh, okay. Now, anytime you cursor over thing, you, you might get these numbers like 2 slash 3. You've got, that means they've got different states. So a state is just another version. So let's see if that, nope. So it's just the Soviet tank, that's, uh, the, the, uh, the T-62 that's got different states. So that's kind of cool. Make it a little bit cooler background. Let me get in up there. Boop. And then if you want to roll the dice, it's really cool. If you want to roll the dice, you just grab them, shake them up a little bit, and then release. And it automatically rolls them. Or just select them and hit roll. Oops, if I hit the roll button correctly. There you go. There you go. That's how you roll the dice. Um, and then right here, uh, again, still part of the scenario. Go on to the next page. There you go. Scenario essentials, rules, uh, special rules, objectives, all that stuff. Everything you need to play. Again, here's the scenario essentials. Hill. Again, reprinted from right here. This is the entire, this is straight from the book, from the starter kit. And then we've got the different charts up here. Here's... Redundancy is not a bad thing. Uh, we got the terrain effects chart right here. You can take a look at it real quick. Terrain effects chart two, two and three. So again, everything you need in here is self-contained. Now, we got one more. Let's go ahead and take a look at Lock and Load Tactical Digital. Well, not digital, because digital is, we do have a digital as well. You should know about that. Uh, lock and Load on Tabletop Simulator workshop and where is it right there log and load tactical starter now this one works a little bit differently this one has four scenarios in it and again you're looking we we have a different background this time i always thought that the uh the having this 3d panoramic as the background was always so cool uh but again it's the same thing you got the train effects charts over here you got a couple cool models oh that's got different states in it as well that just changes the color. Okay, M113 doesn't. Super Sherman. And German Tiger. Since this, since the starter kit has both Vietnam and World War II in it. You got the clock here. You've got your... your oh, oh, for game turn. Okay, I can see that now. I don't know why I didn't catch that earlier. <clears throat> so, again, you got the rule books here. You got the player aids here. You can flip through them if you need them. 
and just zoom in. Here's all your admin counters. Let's take a look at the admin counters. And here's all the admin counters that you're going to need for the starter kit. You got the 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 uh, hero uh, skill markers that you're going to need. The initiative. Just flip it over to see who has initiative. Line of sight, line of event, all that good stuff. Player aid charts, all the player aid charts. If for some reason you need to look up something, they're all right in here. They're also all right here. Again, redundancy is not a bad thing. Map crate. Okay, so again, since I said this has multiple maps and multiple scenarios in it, we take a look at the map crate. Let's take a look in there. Ah, there we go. Everybody recognizes that. That's Fearville. So if you need to, if you're, this is for if you're playing the Vietnam scenario, but if you want to play the uh, World War II scenario or scenarios, you just pull this out. Now, if you'll notice, the maps are a little bit different size. There's nothing wrong with that. You can actually adjust how big or how small you want the map to be. And then once you've got it all set in place the way you want, you can do you can do uh, lock it. You can hit toggle to hit lock to lock it in place, and that means no one will accidentally click on it and lift it and move it. And uh, we've had that issues in other games. <laughs> so and here's scenarios. So you just pull out which scenario card you want to do. Although yeah, so there we go. That's all the scenarios. So you've got two Vietnam. You've got weapons cash. And you got a friend in need and all the special rules for a friend in need. And then you've got rejoining the regiment and Assault on Vierville, and it just depends on which scenario you want to do. And just like Nations of War, World of War, here's the German crate, there's the American crate, there's the Viet Cong crate, and you just you just look, which counters do you need, pull them out. If you need to duplicate and copy them, duplicate and copy them. And that's really the down and dirty low of it. Oh, well, the one thing, if you want to invite a friend in, they obviously have to have tabletop simulator uh, but they don't have to have the module just one person has to have the person whoever's hosting the game has to have the module and basically when you when you want to invite uh, one of your buddies to play let's go ahead and back to the menu and let's let's show you how you do that real quick now some of you may already know this and others of you are are, are looking probably at me blank blank face going what the hell is this guy talking about just bear with me all right so create Multiplayer, and then you can put how many players you want in. I usually keep it at five. Uh, my server name, whatever, that's just my default Steam name. Hit create server, and then you just do it like normal. You just click on what you want to start. But the game is knows that now this is going to be a multiplayer game, and you have the option, if you know how to invite someone into, into, into uh, Steam, into a Steam game, you just bring up your friends list, click on their name and say invite to game and they'll jump right in with you. I think this has a voice comm system. However, from what I understand, the voice comms in tabletop is not that great or it doesn't exist. One of the two. I don't use it. I use Discord. That's, uh, if you really need to, if you're going to play this with someone, go to the Lock and Lord Discord, Discord and use one of the multiple voice channels we have over there. And I'll add the link to that in the description below as well. But you just invite them in. They pop in. They'll be their perspective is going to be from the other side of the table. As you can see, that's my name right there. That's my Steam name, and that's my Steam avatar. And whenever anybody enters a game, their name and their avatar will show up. If you're familiar with multiplayer and Steam games, you know how to do that. But hey, for some of those, for those of you out there who have never had experience with Tabletop Simulator, that's what you're looking for. Um, there are things that this does better than Vassal. There are things Vassal does better than this. Not many couple things. I originally did not think I was going to enjoy Tabletop Simulator. However, once I started getting into it, mainly because of the pandemic going on, uh, my buddies, we were, uh, normally my my face-to-face -face group gets together once a week, Tuesday nights, but since the game store basically closed down because of the, the, the coof going on, um, we decided that we were going to use Tabletop Simulator to start playing games, and we were playing games every night, practically every night, for like six weeks straight we were playing. And, yeah, uh, so it, it's it's great for, for that multiplayer aspect, and it's much easier easier entry than Vassal. Um, even creating the modules are far easier 
than anything Vassal has ever been able to come up with. Um, and there's a lot of games. There's probably probably close to 5,000 games on the workshop in Tabletop Simulator. Um, there's a lot of Hex Encounter stuff. I've found a lot of really cool Hex Encounter stuff that people have done. It doesn't take that much to do as long as you've got the graphics for it. And you can create your own Tabletop Simulator module like this with little to no difficulty. I mean, I could probably even do that. And hey, that's saying something, right? I couldn't even ever think of starting to touch Vassal. Um, now, I know a lot of people out there, the, the older grogs, yes, I know, that's me too, will probably poo-poo and turn up their nose and I've played Vassal for 20 years, I don't need Tabletop Simulator. That's fine, that's cool. You don't have to switch over we've got a lot of younger people who are coming up and tabletop simulator is something they use a lot a lot of college age and younger people and even you know 20 mid 20s early 30s so we decided what's the harm in branching out and putting out some modules for tabletop simulator and like i said the plan is we're going to have one scenario from each box set released as a free uh workshop download everything goes right we're going to release all the box sets, all the scenarios. Now, you are going to have to pay for that, um, obviously, just because there, you, you, should, you shouldn't have to ask why a full box game with 12 to 20 scenarios in it are going to cost you. Now, it's only going to cost you a few bucks, though. It's only going to cost you like 9 10 12 bucks. We haven't decided on a final price point yet. But it'll be available. And, you can, and if you're a tabletop simulator enthusiast, there you go. We're, we're, we're trying to take care of you. Uh, we got some other news coming. There is another platform we're looking at releasing this stuff on, if that's your groove thing, but we're not ready to announce that yet. So there we go. That's a quick look at Tabletop Simulator, what we've released for it so far. Uh, it'll give people who enjoy Tabletop Simulator a chance to get into it and, and look at the games and see if it's something they want to buy the full, full version of. And I'm hoping that a lot of uh, the older Vassal crowd We'll at least give this a try because, like I said, there, this does more things better than Vassal than Vassal does better than TTS. And I just recommend you give it a try. It's not going to hurt. Doesn't well, it's cost you that if you catch it on sale, the ten bucks for Tabletop Simulator. But the scenarios are free. What are you going to lose? Questions, comments, concerns, complaint, criticisms in the comment section below. See everybody later. See ya. Find the button.